Alright guys, this is a problem where it says the smooth uniform rod AB is supported by a ball and socket joint at A, the wall at B, and a cable BC. Determine the components of reaction at A, the tension in the cable, and the normal reaction at B if the rod has a mass of 20 kilograms. Now, let's draw the free body diagram, and we know that A has reactions on the C, the Y, and the x, ax, ay, and ac. And you know that right at the center we got the weight pushing it down. And then we know that b has a reaction at the wall which is parallel to the x-axis and then we have the tension t of the string. Let's write it as t right here. Now that we draw a free body diagram, this, pro this problem should become much simpler. So the first thing I like to do in all these uh, type of problems is do the X, Y, and C resultant forces. So let me write it. Do the X, Y, and C resultant. Oops, resultant forces. So sum of the forces in dx is equal to zero and it is equal to ax plus bx because those are the only two forces in acting parallel to the x now sum of the forces in the y is equal to zero which is equal to ay minus t cosine of 26.6 degrees. Now where did I get this 26.6 degrees? Because if you look at this triangle right here, this is a right triangle. I'm going to redraw it here. And we know that this is T. And we know that this is theta. We also know that this is 0.5 right here. And we know that this length is 1 given right here. This is 1 meter. So given this triangle, you know that the tangent inverse of uh, 0.5, that's a 0.5, I swear, over 1 is equal to theta. And theta will be equal to 26.6 degrees. So as I know that some of the forces in the y is Ay minus t cosine of 26.6 degrees. Now, some all the forces in the C is equal to zero. This is the last one. And we know that that is T sine of 26.6 degrees. This is basic trigonometry plus the reaction at A in the C axis minus the weight, which is 196.2 newtons. Where did I get that the weight was that? because the weight is equal to mass times the acceleration of gravity, which is 9.81. So if you multiply 20 by 9.81, you're gonna get 196.2 newtons for the weight. And that is this force right here. So, if you look at this problem, you know that we have one, two, three, four variables. Do I see any more variables? Oh yes, five variables. Jesus, that's a lot of variables. So what we're gonna do is, when you, whenever you have this problem, what you gotta do is you gotta look at your free body diagram and you're gonna see that there's two very important points here, which are point A and point B. Now, if you notice, point A has three variables on it. It has AX, AY, and AC. That's three variables, put three R. And then B has two variables, which are T and BX. I'm gonna put two bar. So usually when you see a problem like this, you go for the side that has the most variables and you do the moments around that point. So sum of the moments at A. Now, why didn't I do the sum of the moments at B? Well, I could have and it might have solved the problem, but the issue is that I would have only got rid of T and BX, but I still have three variables on the other side. Whereas if I go on the other side and I do sum of the moments at A, then I only get equations from T and BX because I'm eliminating all of the variables that are at A. So that's usually what you should do. Pick 
the point that has the most variables and try to do the moments around that point. That's usually what they don't tell you that makes these problems a lot easier. Now that being said, some of the moments at A, you know it's equal to zero, it's the statics after all. And some of the moments at A is equal to the moment B created by the weight, right? Which is the vector from A to, let's call it point G. I'm gonna call this point, point G, the point where the center of gravity is. Cross the weight plus R A B. So the vector that goes from A to B to here cross T plus BX, which are the two forces acting on B. Now, I'm gonna find each of these variables, so bear with me. The vector that goes from A to G, so the vector that goes from A to here, is equal to negative 0.75i plus 0.5j plus 1k. The weight vector for this cross product is zero on the i plus zero on the j minus 196.2 in the k. Now the vector that goes from a all the way to b so it goes from A all the way to B is equal to minus 1.5 in the I plus 1 in the J plus 2 in the K. And then the vector that is T plus BX is equal to BX in the I minus T cosine of 26.6 in the j, that is the t component, this is the t component in the y, which is negative because it's going, uh, it's going backwards on the uh, positive y axis. And last but not least, plus t sine of 26.6 in the k. And that is this component of t right here which we calculated with this angle. And okay, now we have all the vectors that we need. Let's work on making the matrix, which let me make a new page for this because I know this is gonna get messy. And turn my page on my notes. So let me just write this down again here. Some of the moments at A is equal to, remember R from A to G cross W plus r from a to b cross the t plus bx uh, vector. So that means that the sum of the moments at a is equal to, and this is how I like to write it down on my notes, i, j, k. So the first vector that we're gonna do is this one, r, a, g, which is minus 0 0.75, 0 0.5, and one. And then we're going to do the uh, W, which is 0, 0, and minus 196.2. Don't forget, please don't forget the negative on the weight. You, you got to be really good with your signs because this, this gets messy quickly. And then instead of writing the matrix at the right of it, I'm going to write it below it. This is just my style. Again, I, J, K. Now we're doing this vector right here. This vector is this one. And now we're doing this one. So the first, uh, the first part of the of the matrix is R A B, which is minus 1.5, 1 and 2, and the second part is T plus B X, which is B X minus T cosine of 26.6 and T sine of 26.6. You're gonna see why I like writing them. Um, I write, I like writing it below. Remember, we're adding all these matrices. So let's solve our matrices. So we rewrite the first and second column, minus 0 0.75, 0 0.5, 0, 0. And then we do our positive diagonals, which is I times 0.5 times negative 196.2 is minus 98.1 in the I. 
then zero, then zero, and then we do our negative diagonals. Remember, this is negative, negative, negative. And the first one's zero, the second one's zero, and the third one, which is negative 196.2 times negative 0.75, but it's negative because it's our negative diagonal, then it's minus 147.15j. Now we go to the bottom and we rewrite first and second column. Minus 1.5, 1, this is bx, and this is minus d cosine of 26.6. So this one is equal to positive diagonals. Positive diagonals are, uh, first one with the i is 0.448d in the i. The second one in the j is plus 2bx in the j. And the third one in the k is plus 1.34t in the k. Now we're going to do our negative diagonals. Negative, negative, negative. Remember the signs. The first one's on the k, so it's minus bx, because it's bx times 1 times k times negative. The second one is in the i, which is plus 1.79t in the i, don't forget the t, and the third one is in the j, which is positive 0.671t in the j. That being said, you can add all of the i's and j's from here, and i's and j's and k's from here, Ooh, I forgot a k right here, sorry about that, and you're going to get your equations that are going to allow you to solve this problem. So first we're going to add the i's together, and the sum of all the i's is equal to zero. That being said, that it's negative 98.1 plus 2.23t is equal to zero. And that's already a very easy equation, which we solve for t, and we get that it is equal to 44 newtons. The second one, which is j, you add all the j, all the j components of both matrices, and you're going to get that is equal to minus 147.15 plus 2px plus 0.67t. And we already found t. So we can plug it in here and all of this is equal to zero. And we can plug it in here and literally solve this equation right now for bx. And you should get that bx is equal to 58.83 newtons. Look at that. Already found two equations. Now we could also do k, but k is not necessary because we already found t and bx, right? But if you wanted to do k just because you are OCD like me, 34t minus bx equals to zero. And you could plug these two numbers in just to make sure that everything lines up, right? Now that being said, with, with these numbers, we can go back into the first page. Let me go here. Show this. Perfect. And we could plug those numbers in for AX, AY, and AC. So let me see where my equations are. So right here, for example, this equation, we're going to call it equation one. From equation one, you know that AX is equal to negative BX, which we just found. So AX is equal to minus 58.83 newtons. Then from this, you could plug in t and solve for a y. So let's call this equation two. So from equation two, you can tell that a y by plugging in t is equal to t cosine of 26.6, which puts it at 39.34 newtons. And the last but not least, which is a z, is right here. Let's call this equation three. From equation three, by plugging in t, you're going to find that AC is equal to 176.49 newtons. So final answer for AX, final answer for AY, final answer for AC. Let me go here. Oops, that's a lot of numbers. Final answer for T and final answer for BX. 
If you made it this far, please make sure you go to finalanswer.com. There you're gonna find all the videos I've been working on and six ways to support this channel. And make sure you check my merch store by going to store.finalanswer.com.